Squire, welcome to another episode of Unfiltered, coming to you live from Fresno, California, along with my co-host. Evening, Darius. Good evening, Happy Mike. Tuesday. Mike Carbasi. Uh, what's going on, Mike? Oh, lots going on, but let's talk Bitwise. Okay. Uh, so we're going to talk about Bitwise. We have a, also a great panel for you. Uh, the key attorney, Roger Bonactar, who is representing a lot of the employees or looking at em representing a lot of the employees and knows a lot about what's happening inside uh, Bitwise from the attorneys, is uh, joining us this evening uh, for a short period. Uh, thank you, Roger, and welcome. Um, thank you for having me, gentlemen. And then also David Taub, uh, GB Wire's uh, own uh, journalist, media journalist, who broke Senior the story. Reporter. What did you say? Senior, Senior reporter. reporter. Senior reporter. Thank you. Senior yes. reporter uh, who broke the story uh, several years ago. No, I'm kidding. A couple of weeks ago uh, and has tenaciously looked into this and uh, as bringing a lot of great information uh, to the audience, not only here in Central, Central California, but also really across the country. And uh, David will talk about that uh, here in a minute. But before we get started, yes, let's put up the poll. Uh, so, GB Wire uh, Facebook poll. How do you feel about Bitwise's financial collapse? Mike? Not surprising. Not surprising. You know, it's amazing. Every day, that press conference we had was not even a week ago. And every day we learn more and more thanks to the articles that are coming out. And there clearly uh, was some criminal activity with this company, with the CEOs. And uh, it's interesting, and I know we'll talk about this, that the new CEOs come in and because the board didn't know, I don't know how that's possible, but that's gonna be another, another thing we need to look into. I'm very curious myself. Um, but uh, you know, Jake Soberall is in a great deal of trouble. I wonder where he's hiding out right now because he has a lot to answer for. Well, <clears throat> with that, let's jump in and- um... Oh, he's here. We got him tonight on the show. Uh, by the way, let me, let me say this. Uh, Jake was invited to join us and tell us his perspective on what's going on, what's happened, and uh, what, his what his plans are, even though he's been removed by the board, it looks like. Uh, where is, what's the future of Bitwise? Why did it get to this point? Uh, uh, but he declined to uh, get, on our, get on our show. So let me just uh, dive right in and bring Roger Bonact, our, um, our local attorney, on the, on, on the screen and ask, do you... We would not, Roger, we would not know if there was a federal investigation. I mean, the, the overwhelming majority of folks say there needs to be an FBI investigation and they feel bad about rank and file and employees. Um, would we, if, if F, FBI or U.S. attorneys were investigating this, would they give out any hints? I think David has even called them. I'm going to let David answer that question. But any, what are your thoughts on if there's any investigations? Sure. Uh, thank you for having me. Generally, the U.S. Attorney's Office does not give advance warning, notice, explanation of their investigations they have going on because they don't want people or documents or things disappearing, becoming more difficult to get um, or uh, more difficult to procure or preserve for trial later. So typically what happens is the FBI will, if there is an investigation, which I don't have any information that there is or that there is not, but um, they will begin investigating. And when they think that they have the documents and witnesses marshaled together that they need, they will most likely impanel a grand jury and seek an indictment. Uh, but an indictment is uh, a ways down the road from an initial investigation. Got it. Uh, tell us about the employees that you're representing. Uh, what, are the, what are the issues that you hear and what are your plans to protect the rank and file and how many are, are, are you working with? Sure. So we're working with, we've had contact with well over 100 local Bitwise employees alone. Uh, there are additional employees that have reached out to us from Bakersfield, Oakland, mm -hmm as far away as Ohio. I just ended a call a short while ago with some folks out in uh, New York that are affected in the Buffalo area. Uh, it's, it's true, Texas as well. It's truly a tragedy. I, I, I have been on the phone virtually constantly uh, and in Zooms and otherwise with these uh, unfortunate folks 
that had the rug pulled out from underneath them every day for the last 10 days, almost all day uh, for 10, 11 hours, 12 hours a day on the phone with these folks. And each of them, despite having heard this many, these many people out, every time I hear another story about how a rent check bounced or how a car payment check bounced, or how they're now currently in the red on their checking account because of what Bitwise did. It just, it just gives me a pain in, the, in my heart and my chest for these people. My heart goes out to them. Every single one of these people was absolutely blindsided. None of them tell me that they had any idea that there was a problem. They, they were constantly being reassured that uh, the company was viable, that the future was bright. Uh, they were hiring. I spoke to one gentleman today whose wife was to be uh, start work quite literally the day they announced the furlough, the layoffs, uh, the implosion. Uh, so Bitwise, for anyone that was an ordinary employee, was solid. Everything was fine. The company's growing. We're, you know, we have unlimited paid time off. We, you know, this, is, this is the Google of the Central Valley, even though... A lot of folks are still, at least in the public, not the employees, have a lot of questions about what Bitwise even actually did. What was their net product? Uh, Million dollar question. Uh, Roger, before we go to David Tao, because I want to hear about the latest, because every second there's new information coming out. Let me ask you a question. You know, lots of groups have a right to be upset from the government that may have been defrauded to the investors who clearly were defrauded. But the biggest concern, I think, for so many folks and people like me is what they did to the employees and how they treated them. And you hit the nail on the head. Your rent check. How are you going to pay your rent? Because the check bounced. Um, so apparently there's a new CEO in place. Hopefully there's money still there and they can continue operations. But what would you suggest? What could Bitwise do right now to make this right? Well, the problem is, is Bitwise has definitely made its bet. So by allowing, actually, let me make it, make it more, let me make that correct by knowingly, intelligently, and willfully causing a complete collapse of their workforce, they have created a mountain of legal exposure for themselves. Uh, they, could be, they, they will be subject to adverse action by the Department of Labor. They're gonna have extensive civil liability. What they did here was, in my view, nothing short of reckless and malicious. Uh, so I don't know how they can write a ship and come back from it with this level of malfeasance. It's, it's, and it's funny to me that, you, 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 as you mentioned, what could they do to make this right? I'm talking to employees, and some of them still hold out hope that somehow they're going to wake up and it's going to be different. It's, it's going to be back to normal. And all of the objective signs that we see, every piece of evidence that is tangible, meaningful, and irrefutable points to the inevitable conclusion that Bitwise collapsed. So I don't know what they're going to do unless the board decides to, to, to get out checkbooks and pay themselves. I don't know what they're going to do. They owe everybody and their brother money. They encumbered every asset that they had to the hill, uh, according to, the, uh, to some of the, uh, the accounts, which actually I think... Uh, Mr. Todd Brooke, he was the tip of the spear on this about the uh, financial transactions where they were purportedly offering shares as collateral for debt um, to multiple lenders, consummating a transaction, and then pledging those same shares over, you know, without disclosing that they had been pre-pledged to another lender. I don't know how they write this shit. Go ahead, Mike. So Roger, you know, you mentioned, and it's, it's so tragic, employees holding out hope. I think that proves how powerful the deception was and how that was used to bring in venture capitalists. They're the proverbial tech company. They're right on the issues. They play, their DJs play music during work hours, but the fundamentals of having a company that has actual collateral and cash, I mean, it, it's just a real shame. It's a real shame. And the way they operated, they, 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 they treated different classes of employees different ways. I mean, it was, it's true, it's astonishing. Some employees had unlimited PTO and wacky taffy stuff that we see in these tech companies out in the Bay. Here, with publicly traded companies, Bitwise was offering things like that here. 
how do you operate if key employees, allegedly key employees with six figure salaries are taking four to six weeks off at a time, but yet people that are essential to the operations of their, the, the physical operations on the ground, they can't even get, get uh, time off to, to take a few days for a vacation once a year. They were Those are family members too, right? There may be some, some nepotism. Oh, I, I, there may have been that, but I, I think that they actually, I hate to say it, but for the folks that um, that were in the in the higher positions, they just were treated better. Uh, I, and it's, uh, it you know, it's not just a compensation issue. It's, it's uh, the flexibility, it's the demand. And they were out there stoking the coals of their existing employees, trying to bring their spouses and family members in into the fold to work at Bitwise. I, 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 I have a chart that I'm, I will compile and eventually I'll share perhaps with Mr. Top. There's a huge number of people where both spouses worked at Bitwise, both spouses. Wow. So all earnings for the household gone. It's, it's absolute tragedy, complete calamity and would have been absolutely avoidable with some reasonable management. And as you know, you've mentioned Jake and Irma, uh, I, I have significant doubts. Um, and I, the discovery will show in the litigation that they were just rogue out here making bad calls with nobody else knowing it. You don't, you don't hit the big red button and decimate your entire workforce without the board knowing that it's going to happen. So, but that'll all come out in the discovery. Good, good points. Uh, Roger, have you, are you, the Private Attorneys General Act that, that talks about, I don't know, that's a labor issue, labor yes. law issue. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think what are the next steps with, the, with, with Bitwise. You're representing, sounds like, about 100 of their employees. And at some point, there's going to be a, a, some kind of a complaint filed, I'm assuming, uh, on, on, on your end. Um, and I'm just trying to think, what are the next steps for this company that owes money to the government, taxes, investors? We don't know how much investor money has been uh, wiped out. Uh, you know, I hear tens of millions of dollars. Um, then we hear it could be, number could be substantially lower or substantially higher. And they just recently got a 80 million, and I'm, I'm going to bring David on, uh, bring, got an 80 million dollar loan um the goldman sachs one the yeah maybe david can elaborate on uh what was that 80 million dollar loan they just recently got it was not a loan but it was the latest round of investment from uh venture capitalist firms for center for capital it's one of the main ones who've been almost in every round of bitwise fundraising there's also been some brand name investment banks goldman sachs Citibank. i have any among them and so that's 157 million that Bitwise has raised from about three or four different rounds of investors over the last four years. Now, the loans are being referred to. One was alleged in a recent lawsuit that Bitwise took one of the properties it owned and they got a $30 million loan. Let's put David on. on. Sorry. Hold, on, on, say, hold on a second, David. For some reason, you're not on this. I want to make sure. They, there we go. Okay, David and uh, some of the, the other uh, images is good too, so the audience can see both. Okay, keep going. Bitwise, according to a lawsuit, took $30 million using the state center warehouse which was on R Street in downtown as collateral. And the problem was uh, they had a business partner and they needed the business partner's permission to do anything like that. And the business partner, a Texas-based venture capitalist firm called Nickbite, which is associated with a couple of San Francisco venture capitalist firms, they sued, alleging a breach of contract. Now, Bitwise also put that building up and a couple of its bakers for the properties. All, I don't know if it's jointly owned, at least they're business partners with Nick Bites. They put them up uh, for sale, once again, without their partner Nick Bites' permission. So that's also part of the lawsuit. And we're hearing that other uh, assets that Bitwise have owned, they've leveraged, meaning they went to the bank, said, please give us a loan. And this company, this building, we're going to use as leverage. And it's going to be taking a lot to untangle. It's going to take a lot to, for people to get their money back, whether it's investors, whether it's employees. Today's story on GV Wire was about a uh, businessman who created a real estate app. He used Bitwise and hired them out first just to create the technology. The app was pretty successful. 
So Bitwise wanted to form a company with this man to help expand it. So they did. And then the lawsuit alleges that Bitwise kind of muscled this guy out, kind of a Microsoft thing, to uh, get him out. So he's suing. But one of the points I made to his attorney is, uh, you know, get in line. There's going to be a lot of people wanting their money back from Bitwise. Uh, even Roger, I mean, even if you win, what's there left to win? That's a good that's question the, for Roger. That, that is a, a very good question. And it's something that I've uh, that many folks have asked me about. There are going to be a significant number of competing claims for their assets. Um, and under the labor co under the labor code and under Cal Warren, there's an argument to say that there are some additional remedies available to the employees, uh, which we're going to invoke. But let's be candid. If the real estate assets are pledged, um, the uh, liquidity of the business is expected to be non-existent. So it will be very interesting to see how this unfolds after they have been served and formally appeared in the case. Uh, we'll see which way the wind is blowing, I think, pretty quickly. Because I imagine Roger. they would probably, if they think that they are truly judgment proof, we'll see a bankruptcy filing probably pretty promptly thereafter. But for that, we already have some contingency plans in place to contest it and uh, make sure that we get it back into Superior Court if they take those steps. I have a question for, I'm sorry, I have a question for David and for Roger. Uh, Jake is a bankruptcy attorney by training and, ex and, and work experience. Is that correct? Do we, do we know that, Jake Soberall? David? You? I know he's his attorney. He's worked around town. Uh, you know, his specialty is still a little bit to be determined. And at one point, uh, the, they had promised uh, 250,000 jobs here in the Valley. Is that correct, David? I'm not necessarily bitwise hiring them. I think the plan was bitwise create this technological avalanche of all these technological companies moving to Fresno. So the 250, I believe, is more than that. Not necessarily Bitwise hiring them all, but Bitwise would be the leader. Other tech companies would come, and that's where we get the 250,000. Uh, listen, at this point, any number you hear about Bitwise is suspect. I know a lot of people like to say 900, or lost 900 employees. I don't believe that number. I Listen, you know 300 in Fresno, because one, that's what an actual Bitwise person I trusted told me. Two, that's approximately what the number was when Bitwise filed for uh, the PPP loans as part of the Federal Recovery Act last year. Got it. Two rounds, we added up to about 300. And then from reporting, we know that in El Paso, they had about 10 employees. Toledo, they had about 15 employees. So you're telling me there's about 500 or so employees in Oakland and Bakersfield? I don't think so. So uh, I'd be wary, wary to use that 900 number. Uh, maybe put an asterisk, alleged 900. The only thing I know and I somewhat trust to see them is about 300 in Fresno. Even I'm not sure there. So any number you hear associated with Bitwise from this point on, that'd be a little weary. I think Roger and for David, I think what we need is information. I can tell you the city of Fresno was kept in the dark and we need that information to make decisions. I'm sure the feds need information. So Roger, you mentioned discovery. Um, I know a court issued an injunction recently, told them to hold off on, I think it was Judge Hamilton. Can you let us know where that process is and when we can expect to have discovery or get information and when you as a as for your clients would release that information to the public? Sure. So I, I imagine I would expect that uh, they will make efforts. They meaning Bitwise will make efforts to keep things like discovery secret. So what just for the folks that aren't familiar discovery, there's a process in lawsuits where each side can ask each other questions under oath and they can require the other side to turn over documents and to, to sign an affidavit under oath that they've in fact turned over the documents that were requested. So when we are in discovery, we're gonna be asking for a, a whole host of information. And we're also going to be subpoenaing third parties such as their payroll service providers, et cetera, to confirm wages earned, wages due, uh, withholdings that were being deducted from net paychecks, um, and, and, and the like. So in that process, we'll learn a lot more about, for example, that very important question that David raised of how many employees did they really have? Um, I will share a fact that I've uh, re only recently become quite comfortable with being true. 
is that these guys had an extremely complex setup. They have so many entities. They have multiple entities, which almost layer over one another. And these different names and, and, and associations and affiliations, it's, it kind of looks like a shell game. Um, I don't know if they did it for legitimate reasons. Perhaps they did it that way in order to secure different rounds of funding, in order to collateralize one asset versus non, not collateralize another. I, I don't know what the underlying theory was, but they may have had 900 employees. Maybe they had 700, maybe they had 500. I'm not sure because we're going we're gonna to take a deep dive into these entities and who was working where. Uh, like, for example, in Bakersfield, there was an entity called Stria or Stria, which Bitwise acquired. Um, and they kind of, the entity was owned by Bitwise, operated by Bitwise. It's a Bitwise entity, but they keep these different names on things to, own, to create the facade of separation. So maybe when they're sharing good news or, or trying to market themselves by saying things like, we have 900 employees, they count every sub entity within the umbrella, which ultimately they're gonna be accountable for all of those employees, whether they like it or not. Stria, GeekWise, they've got BW Industries, they've got uh, Bitwise Industries, they've got all these different little names that they have for things. But you know, we're gonna take a deep dive into it and we're gonna figure out exactly who is where and when, uh, when we get that discovery in the case. A Great lot point. Of this one, one go ahead, go ahead, David. Me. Quickly. This is what one insider told me that Bitwise, in essence, create their own middleman company when they want to get these loans, when they want to get these leases. Now, Bitwise itself may have not had the right credit, may have not been willing to share the right financial documents that could get these loans. But if they create a middleman saying, uh, hey, we have a tenant already set up, so why don't you give us a loan so we can get into this building? Because we already got the tenant who's going to take up 100% of the building. So that's how one insider kind of explained it to me, why you see all these different LLCs and inks and every other kind of corporate entity that you call them perhaps shell games. You know, that's one of the reasons. They form like an LLC for every building they bought. So you're right, it's going to take a, a lot to figure out who's who and what's what. Uh, a <clears throat> couple, couple of uh, good points. Uh, Kyle Lawson said that, says that uh, Jake Soberall is an intellectual property lawyer. I guess that's his uh, training and, uh, and experience. Cam Malloy got a couple of great questions. How often did their board meet? How involved was their board? Uh, and she read that the board president, now, who, who's now the new CEO, was a founding board member. How could they be so, how could they be so blindsided? And she hopes that they have board, board of directors uh, insurance. Uh, she, uh, again, she goes on to say, I just found it, found it hard to believe that they were so hands off. They didn't see anything coming. And it seems like they, the board, were not doing, doing their job. Can I ask David a follow-up on that? David. It's a great, it's, by the way, a great comment and, and, and great question that at some point we need to probably dig into, David. And who's on their board? Like, I couldn't find that information, David. Um, is it, has, was it easy for you to find out? No, it's still a little bit of a mystery. You know, it's a privately held company. So, you know, they don't decide to share their board not on their website or anything. I had one document that's a little outdated from three years ago that showed four board members, Jake Herba, Mitch Kapoor from Kapoor Capital, and a, uh, another venture capitalist uh, you know, in the fashion industry from New York by the name of uh, Richelieu Dennis Jr. Now, this Olin Douglas character, I guess he's a real person. Uh, other than that announcement he made Friday night when the board fired Irma and Jake, uh, we haven't heard from him. We haven't seen him. You know, there are pictures of him. There are you know, other interviews that he's given on other things in the past. He's a venture capitalist, Olin Douglas, based out of Baltimore. So I'm hoping he's a real person. But like I said, with Bitwise right now, until I see it, it's hard to believe. Just you one know, of those stories that so, uh, the credit so, of Bitwise. A couple of points. Uh, Todd Cook had a comment and a question. Um, yeah, yeah, Jake did not actually decline. He just never responded back to our uh, producer, uh, to Paul. Um, and we actually don't know where he's at. There's rumors, and I don't really want to talk about rumors on what we have heard, where, which city or country he may be in. 
But again, those are rumors, so we're just not, not going to discuss them uh, here this evening. Um, go ahead, Mike. You uh, have a comment, and yeah, then I want to. Uh, another concern, and this is they, they have they have hurt this community in so many different ways. One of the things that occurred to me today is they've defrauded quite a few folks locally in the last 30 days. They've been trying to get these high interest loans at the tunes of millions of dollars. That's money that's gone, as far as we know, and can't be invested in other parts of the community. So I wonder how long that's going to affect us. Any yeah, news on that? From who? From David. Have you heard anything? Roger, have you heard anything about, have any of the investors contacted you, you or any information about, how, about just who engaged in that? Reports, you know, it's just stuff really on deep background. You know, we've heard that people may have invested in this most recent ask uh, millions of dollars and allegedly secured by the stock of Jake and Irma. But we published some of these email pitches and one was kind of tying it to Goldman Sachs. So, hey, Goldman Sachs, have some requirements that we need to keep money in the bank. We need to keep $65 million in the bank. And we're very close to a $100 million deal with Goldman Sachs. Well, source of me, who had have inside information or information about Goldman Sachs, I mean, none of that's true. Goldman Sachs did invest in that latest $80 million round. It was just a small investment. There were no conditions. So saying so, telling investors was just not true. And whether that's criminal or not, I don't know. Uh, I ask the Department of Justice, and they give the standard response: we don't, uh, we don't uh, accept or we don't decline anything. So the only way we'll know if there is ever a criminal investigation okay. when they're charges made, or somebody wants to tell us they've been asked by the criminal department uh, that they've been contacted. Let, let, let me let me uh, kind of move on. A uh, couple of uh, a couple of great uh, questions. Debbie Ruland. As a question, who is a CFO or do, do they even have one? So Roger and, and David, Bitwise is still in business, correct? They, not they have not filed for bankruptcy or any protection under any, any, any of the laws of the country. Is that correct? I would imagine if they would file for bankruptcy, it would be here in the, in the federal courts that are just quite literally two blocks to my east, the Eastern District. Uh, if not, I would imagine they would at a minimum file in a California federal court. Uh, I have no information that they filed. Dave, David, you know, being so thorough, I'm sure he probably knows that for a fact or not uh, as to whether or not they filed for bankruptcy. I will say this, they would have to dissolve the entity as well to shed uh, some of the liabilities. And I, I can't imagine, I, I would imagine the Secretary of State's office and in the bankruptcy uh, proceedings, that would be that's a that's going to be a long task. That's not a light switch away. So I, I, I will state that there is a CFO on the website. I'm not going to list who it is. Hopefully, it's a real person. But you go under bio, bio coming soon. You know, with Bitwise, well, say, it's hard to know. If it's on their website, say, who, who well, is the, the CFO? Yeah, the name they have on there is Karen Nightingale. I'm not familiar with that person. I don't know that person. Hopefully, it's a real person. And this person can either be a whistleblower or shed light on what happened. You know, as far as the bankruptcy question, uh, I checked this afternoon, at least nothing reported on the federal court websites. And okay. I don't think it's something that Bitwise would self-report, so we'll uh, keep on checking. Uh, I have a question for Roger. So, Roger, uh, a lot of the folks that David has talked to a week ago, they were very apprehensive and talking to him, giving information. Then as the you know days went by and they got more frustrated and... First, you know, they got they didn't get paid, and then their four hundred one k got froze, and so many other uh, you know financial challenges. More people stepped up and started talking uh, to David uh, and giving uh, you know a, a lot more information. And my guess is more folks uh, are going to uh, step up over the next few days and give a lot more information. But qu question for you. Uh, uh, David is going to probably feel that a ton of these, and my guess is some folks will, will call you. What is your message to the GB Wire audience right now? If you have, I mean, what, what are the things that you're looking for that people can help solve this mystery, address the issues, make the employees whole? Uh, you know, what are you looking for? If folks have access somehow, whether directly or indirectly, to financial records, solicitations from Bitwise uh, for investment. Oftentimes it will it'll identify these other persons that may be key players or the upper brass at Bitwise. 
um, you know, we are going to want to see those records, get that information so that we can compare it to what Bitwise is ultimately going to be squeezed to give up uh, and see if they're being truthful about things. So if you have financial records, if you have payroll records, if you have financial statements, if you have any of these things uh, or, or just even the uh, the 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 that a boy pat on the head uh, emails that they were sending out to their employees about how things are looking great and everything is rosy and uh, investment is coming through. Please preserve those things, put them together. You can send them to us. Uh, you can, I have a dedicated email set up for it. Bitwise at bonactarlawfirm.com. Um, you can also, obviously we have a phone and fax. You can call us, talk to us. We're happy to help. Um, and also for the employees that have not yet reached out, I just want you to know you have a home here. There's plenty of room on the ARC. Everyone uh, should, it, should contact us that was affected by this. It only serves to help the collective good in this. Uh, it's going to be a class action. Everyone was injured in the same way and we need to hold these people accountable for hurting the community which was their launch pad, the community which gave them a shot, the community which invested in them first got hit the hardest. And we need to make sure that these employees are made whole. And I'd appreciate any help anyone can offer. Thank you, Roger. Let's put Roger's, uh, that special website uh, or email address up again. There we go. Bitwise at bonactorlawfirm.com. Let's leave it up there for a few seconds uh, for folks to take that information down. Uh, and then I have another question for Roger and for David. Uh, is this something that the, our, our district attorney is going to get involved in, or is it really federal authorities or state authorities need to get involved? Uh, I, I'll take the first pass at that if it's okay, David. So first of all, passing, giving someone a, a, a bad check knowingly is a, is a, is a state offense. It's, it's a violation of the penal code. That's pretty clear to me. You have a lot of other issues here that I'm, I'm not super privy to. I've obviously seen David's great reporting and investigation and contacting these investors as to the representations that were made to investors in order to get them to part with their hard earned cash. But uh, there is a potential, at least based on what's been reported. Now I haven't verified any of these things. I'm basing my conclusions on what has been reported and is available in the public media there's potential for significant federal charges, wire fraud, mail fraud, uh, bank fraud. Uh, there's uh, other issues as well. I would imagine that the, that the feds would be interested in it considering the dollar amounts and that it is a, that the activity does, is, is, it is not just in Fresno, but it covers a larger area that is within a federal district called the Eastern District. Fresno is a part of that. Bakersfield is a part of that. Modesto is a part of that. So all of these activities would fall within the district. There's an argument to say that the bad acts also originated in the district. So I would imagine if there was a federal charge and federal investigation, it would be based out of here, Fresno, the Eastern District, the courthouse is there on O. Before, uh, actually let's get David's comment on that. And then I wanna show a brief clip on one of David's interviews when David asks uh, where they're going to get financing. What is their uh, financial health and where are they going to get financing? Uh, his interview with uh, Jake uh, from last week. But uh, David, before we get, play that video, uh, do you have any comments on uh, if, if some, of the uh, some of our local folks are getting involved or, or not? Yeah, just to add to what Roger said, this also involves multiple states. You could definitely put it in the federal curve. Remember, they got offices in Toledo and El Paso, Texas as well, and Buffalo, New York. So when you got multiple states, uh, if the federal jurisdiction wants to combine it into one case. And unlike Fresno, some of these other jurisdictions, Bakersfield, El Paso, Toledo, put in their, their government money, public money into it, at least a lot more than Fresno ever did. So you got that to consider. Now, from what I heard, uh, Lisa Smith Camp, the district attorney for Fresno County, is kind of balking a little bit at, at thinking about criminal charges, for, according to my sources. Uh, she may think this is not really her purview, but this is more of a civil thing for people like Roger to handle as opposed to a criminal thing. But Roger, uh, maybe you can back me up on this. The district attorney can file civil lawsuits as well. They have, and so is Smith Camp. 
the the district attorney can file a civil suit in certain circumstances. They usually use this code section called uh, it's called the unfair competition law, and that's generally to regulate what would be uh, uh, you know uh, unfair, illegal, or uh, or abusive business practices. Those are typically the civil actions that you will see a DA file. I will say that DA Smith Camp is, you know, she's she's very much uh, invested in the community and the community's well-being. I would think that if this was something that uh, she believed that Fresno County could tackle and be most effective at, that that she would, you know, take action on it. I know that she works regularly and very well with the local federal authorities. Um, while I don't have any specific information on it, I'd be willing to wager that she is in uh, direct and ongoing communication with the federal authorities about these issues to explore who is going to take the lead because of those very important, uh, those, those points that uh, David just raised, that this does span over multiple states because they had multiple states. And whenever you see activity being directed across a state line, that opens the door for federal involvement. Doesn't mean it always sticks, but at least it gives them an initial basis to have this thing called jurisdiction, which means a, a, a baseline right to make an inquiry or to take an action. And so because Bitwise was uh, did have operations that were affected in multiple states with potentially the bad acts being happen, happening here, but directed as a consequence somewhere else, there probably would be a nexus sufficient for the feds to want to, if not actually, take steps. Okay, let's, uh, let's increase the volume so we can actually hear it. And also, let's play a clip now. Let's play the clip, or, uh, the interview clip. Now, over the last few years, Bitwise has raised $157 million in, in capital from investors. With that money, are there any conditions that these investors place on Bitwise do you have to keep a certain amount of money in the bank or any other type of conditions? So, as you know, David, we're a private company and we're subject to all manner of confidentiality with the really wonderful folks that invest in Bitwise. I appreciate the question, but I do have to respect those confidentialities. That's not something we report out on. Right. And would you be able to share who the shareholders in Bitwise currently are with all that investment? As a private company, we don't we don't share that publicly. Right, because you know, in your announcements, it's a Support Capital is a name that always comes up. Uh, some major banks like J.P. Morgan Chase. Would you be able to say just how much equity they have in the company? That's not something we share out publicly. I um, think there was another. There was also another clip where David asked about uh, health of the financial health of the company and um, you know how they plan on financing the buildings. Can you play that clip? Any comments on that from uh, Roger first on, on the clip we just played? Because they aren't publicly traded, their financial filings would not be public. They would not be required to disclose them. Um, I think that in certain circumstances, perhaps uh, they would have some latitude to disclose what they want to disclose. Obviously, submitting a financial statement to a bank for the purposes of a loan does not make the financial statement now public information. If that were the case, then every time you, you know, someone applied for a mortgage, someone could claim that their W-2s and pay stubs would be discoverable. So they do have some privacy rights. Okay. Okay. You know, I'm going okay. to add, Darius, watching that clip makes me incensed. I mean, this guy is lying through his teeth, acting like he's a legitimate business person when we know that whole time he was selling shares to people, to the same shares that four or five different people trying to secure high interest loans they knew they were going to default on, they knew they were writing bad checks, and he's interviewing with David, lying through his teeth and defrauding this entire community and Buffalo and Toledo and Oakland and Merced, and it's an absolute disgusting travesty, and I hope the feds are watching and they investigate him. Now, I'll tell you, I did reach out to this new CEO. I really hope he actually takes up my offer and contacts me. So we can have a real conversation about where we move forward because there's a lot of hurt in this community and I'm sorry I'm a bit animated, but I'm pissed. This guy is the biggest fraudster. This is Bitron in Fresno. And we people expect and we have a responsibility to make sure he goes behind bars if he defrauded people and defrauded the federal, federal government and the city government. You know, we, we, have, we have 
Oh, do you have a video to play? Okay, let's play the video. David Taub with GV Wire here with Bitwise co-CEO Jake Soberall. Jake, thanks for making the time. I'm going to start off with the big question. What is the financial health of Bitwise right now? Man, I, I hope it's good. Uh, um, we're really excited about the future over here. So we um, uh, have uh, been fortunate to grow a lot over the course of the last several years, not only getting to serve uh, cities like our headquarters here in Fresno, but but uh, nine additional cities around the country. Um, uh, we're getting ready to open our location here in Fresno that we've been working on for a long time. Um, and we've been really excited at the traction that we've seen as we've oriented the business around Salesforce and DocuSign over the course of the last several years. And so um, we're really optimistic about the future. Fresno County tax records show that you are late in paying $120,000 in property taxes. Uh, what happened and in, in when do you guys plan to pay? So that, that's news to me. Um, I, I am... I'm happy to check in on it. I think you know one of the unfortunate parts of running a company that's growing really quickly is you uh, uh, things get missed. We've got a great finance team, but um, uh, that's not an issue that I'm I'm uh, directly read in on. Okay. Also, question is: Are you up to date on your rent? So I'm hearing that you guys are half a million dollars behind on paying rent for the buildings you lease in Fresno. That is news to me. I don't know where where that information is coming from. Okay. So are you up to date on your rent? Uh, to my knowledge, yes. All right. And everything okay with uh, payroll and vendors, everything taken care of there? To my knowledge, yes. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing to keep in mind, David, and this is something that is, is maybe atypical for Fresno, is Bitwise hasn't been around for 100 years. We've been around for 10 years. We were from zero to 1,000 employees in that period of time. And so um, the uh, fast growth technology company doesn't operate like a 100 year old company. We don't have, perpetually do not have the systems and processes necessary to stay up with where we are today. We're always, always on the GNA side going to be catching up uh, to our growth on the revenue side. That's just the reality, I think, of, of growing a company this quickly. Yeah, uh, thank you for that interview, David. Uh, there was a comment from Megan Graham. Uh, that says uh, I was one of indus uh, Bitwise Industries' biggest cheerleader. She, she's obviously duped. She doesn't know what she's talking about. So yeah. let's just leave it at that, uh, Megan. Uh, get your get your facts straight uh, first. Same thing happened to me, Darius. Uh, Mr. Warzowski wrote an article uh, about the press conference, and look, I enjoy reading his articles, but I have a bell every time something's inaccurate, and I rung, rung that bell a few times no, because exactly. uh, he claimed that uh, we were big cheerleaders. I never even met the co CEOs. Uh, a bit wise, and um, I, I've never been. Uh, I've been. I've been a skeptic, but I don't understand where he gets that from. But no, that's exactly. the world we live in. So I had a. I'm not going to disclose disclose this because there's too many legal issues going on. But I had a, 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 a run in with uh, Bitwise very early on, before anybody had heard of, of them. And they were a very small company in a small office across the street from one of the projects we were building. A very negative uh, encounter. But uh, we'll just leave it at that. That was probably uh, 10 years ago, maybe 9 or 10 years ago. Um, let's see. Anything else before we wrap up? Um, One thing I'd like to share, if there's anyone out there who's watching, who's an employer and is hiring, I have a, a long list of very nice people, people that despite being fleeced and trampled by their employer, you know, feel bad and are sad to see it implode after they bounce their rent check. So if, if you are hiring and you have jobs that are open uh, from anything ranging from, uh, I've had uh, folks that have contacted us that are, uh, you know, phone services, like call center type folks to uh, janitorial to the security, et cetera. These are some really nice people, lots of technical positions as well, lots of programmers, uh, code writers, et cetera. If you have a if you have a job position that's open, please send me your job post. I will share it with these nice people, and maybe we can find a way to get these people back on track, get them their lives back, while we go fight this fight. I, for one, I I just made a job offer to a young lady who I thought was just super sweet. She was incredibly articulate, and I, I offered her a jobs. And you know, I mean, we're hopefully going to see where that goes. So 
you can do that too out there. You know, for any business owners that are watching, you can help. Um, you, you can reach out by that same email that's on the screen. And I'd be happy, I'd be overjoyed to hear from those folks as well. That sounds good. Um, any other comments, Mike, from I, you? Yeah, the city of Fresno, just to let you know, uh, we are working on having a job fair. So we've already connected with the WIB, the Workforce Investment Board which is one element of, that, that's part of what you do when Bitwise or any company that's gonna have furloughs or layoffs within 60 days of that, they let you know. That way you can connect people to services. We're gonna be having very soon at City Hall, uh, not just for Bitwise, especially for Bitwise, but for all employees that are looking for a job. Uh, we're gonna have a job fair at City Hall. And that's, uh, that announcement's coming soon. Well, one anecdote uh, about what, uh, losing your job. It's never any fun. I think enough years have expired so the uh statute of limitations done, but I worked for a, a company once and uh, all of a sudden, poof, they're done. Uh, don't, don't show up to work. Uh, your paychecks may work or not. But fortunately, I was in a position where I held the petty cash. So, you know, I kept the petty cash at that time and a computer. So uh, the doors okay, I think still, uh, are still open. I'm on attorney. Roger is. He can, he can tell you what's legal and what's not legal. We're going to wrap <laughs> up and I know Roger is going to drop off. So final thoughts, we'll start with uh, uh, Roger, then we'll go to David, and then uh, Mike and I will wrap up. Uh, by the way, Steve Branda got the evening off. Uh, we didn't talk about that earlier. You couldn't uh, make it. Where is Steve? I don't know. Okay. We're going to mark a, a big A for absentee <laughs> for Steve Branda. Okay. Uh, final thoughts and comments, recommendations, asks of the audience, Roger. Final thoughts, if you know an employee that was affected, please share our contact information, have them contact us. High tides float all boats, they're strength in numbers. Uh, if you are an employer and you're looking for, for uh, some kind and intelligent people, I've encountered quite a few that are uh, presently in the market, so please reach out. Okay. Uh, Roger, by the way, we didn't thoroughly in introduce you. Could you give us like a one minute background on uh, your legal, experiences? Uh, sure. Uh, I, uh, I started up, well, I mean, I'm, I'm a Valley native. I'm a homegrown product. I'm a product of our local public schools, K through 12. I left, I got my, uh, for college and for law school. I graduated from UC San Diego. I got my uh, bar, I, uh, excuse me, I got my law degree at Santa Clara. And uh, then I came home. I practiced at the uh, largest uh, firm here in the Valley for a number of years. I also uh, interned at the AG's office and I opened my own office uh, over a decade ago and have, been, and have helped many, many of our friends and neighbors uh, with things ranging from uh, employment claims, personal injury, uh, and consumer claims and criminal defense. Okay. Good. Uh, David? Final thoughts, comments, and I know you and some of your colleagues are working on more stories, uncovering more issues on where is Bitwise, where is it headed, and where is the original founders, where are they, where are they at now? And I know you're working on, on all of that to be released as that information becomes available to you, but do you have any questions, comments uh, for the audience? Well, Jake and Irma have uh, gone ghost, so if you know their whereabouts, you can find me at gbwire.com. Uh, if you have any information, any any documents, any inside information about uh, Bitwise, contact Roger uh, or contact me first. Uh, contact your uh, friendly neighborhood journalist and uh, we can talk and uh, we'll hear your information. So, uh, you know, we rely on tips. GVWire.com. Look for David Tao. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, Mike? Yeah, I just want to say thank goodness for local journalism because uh, you broke the story and it helped us to respond very quickly. You know, what we learned is not all companies uh, that like this that are potentially a Ponzi scheme or whatever you want to call it, uh, follow the law and they can hurt a lot of people. And I think that I just want to thank the community because so many folks have stepped forward from property owners that say we'll help the businesses so they're not shut down that we're tenants a bit wise. Um, to just folks offering jobs, uh, and that's a big deal. And so we are relying not just, uh, you know, government isn't always the answer. Uh, we rely on our community to step forward, and Fresno and downtown is so much more than just Bitwise, and we're not going to allow uh, these liars, uh, these thieves, to bring us down. And it's going to be a lot of work, but uh, we are going to get through this. And I, I look forward, and I hope the, uh, say it again, I have an open invitation to the new CEO. 
I hope he reaches out to me so we can start the healing process. And you know, if there's a way to salvage this thing, this thing that's great. I'm I'm interested, but um, there's a lot of questions that have to be answered. Thank you, Mike. Uh, and my final thoughts. First of all, there's a lot of clips uh, on uh, gvr.com and on our Facebook page about uh, David's interview uh, with um, Jake. That was a long interview. We've kind of uh, split it up into small, smaller segments that you can watch on Facebook, on our, on our YouTube channel, and also gbwire.com. And uh, I know of, well, I know of people that have invested in uh, Bitwise, local investors that have given their money. Um, I know Bitwise Reach has reached out to a lot of, several folks to invest with them over the last three to four weeks, and it just did not seem right. And I think some of those folks are. Uh, came out and uh, leaked this information, that knowing that something does not sound uh, right. By the way, if you could put all, all of us on the screen, that would be great. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. So, um, I know there's some folks that are going to get hurt, folks that have put several million dollars into Bitwise recently, last, you know, several months. Uh, some folks are going to get hurt, and this is just the beginning of what we're going to find out about what actually took place inside Bitwise, why it went from a very small company to an incredible success story, and why it's uh, becoming such a, well, I don't want to use the word Ponzi scheme, but uh, so many folks are going to lose a lot of money. Uh, and it sounds like all their employees, or overwhelming majority of their employees are going to be, um, what is the word? Stiffed? <laughs> Uh, and, and, and I'm grateful we have great local attorneys like Roger Bonactor that is going to represent them. Uh, I can tell you this, one of them is trying to buy a home from us right now, uh, from Granville Homes, mm. and they can't. Everything is, is put on pause. I mean, this is the least of their, well, I shouldn't say least of their worries, but they're trying to buy a home. There's other folks that, like Roger said earlier, can't pay the rent. Um, their checks bounced, and so many, many challenges. And it's all really unfortunate, especially as I'm reading David's articles that some of these folks recently, some of the employees were bought Lexus and Teslas and Mercedes Benz. And, and if you knew somebody or a friend or a relative, um, you know, you got better treatment. So it's, it's a private company. They can do whatever they want. Uh, it's really uh, none of our business until they take city money local taxpayer dollar money, federal dollars, and, and they actually end up uh, stiffing so many uh, or hurting so many of their employees, uh, shame on them. If they did it willfully, shame on them. And they deserve to be uh, prosecuted. If they made a mistake, they didn't know what they were talking about, I hope that they would come out. I hope Jake and Irma will come out and come out clean and say, listen, we made a mistake. We grew too fast, like a lot of tech companies. Here's the mistakes we made. We want to make everybody whole. Just give us time. We'll work together on putting everything back together. That's what they should be doing. And that's my message to Jake and Irma. If you really care about this community, about your staff, come out, put together a plan, talk to them, talk to your staff, and make every investor, every employee, city of Fresno, and all the folks that you borrow money from, make them all good. Uh, and then you can really recover your name and Bitwise's name. On behalf of all of us at GV Wire, uh, thank you for watching this episode. I want to thank Roger for coming on. David, thank you for coming on and your great uh, reporting on, on this issue, along with really the entire staff that has worked on putting together the videos, the video editing, uh, a lot of the research. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of folks at GV Wire have been uh, on, on, uh, on this uh, program and on, on this particular story. And tomorrow morning on um, uh, Fox 26, uh, between 7.30 and 7.45. Uh, I believe it's, is it Bill or are you on, David? Talk about. Bill. Bill. Bill is going to talk about some of these issues uh, at Bitwise uh, on live uh, KMPH 26. So until next Tuesday, <clears throat> thank you for joining us. Thank, thank, uh, thanks to all the audience. Thank you, Roger and David. And thank you. Thanks, thanks Thank you. Thank all you. Right. See you all next week. Good night.